What's up gamers? I've got the tutorial for you. Okay, first off, make sure that your computer is capable of doing this. It needs to be 64-bit uh, and have virtualization. So you can check by opening a run box and typing msinfo32. You can either get that by pressing Windows key and R or searching for it. You want to make sure that it says system type x64 and all of these Hyper-V things say yes. Next, you need a 2GB or larger USB drive that you can wipe for installing Ubuntu. Download Ubuntu 18.04, link in the description, and Rufus also, link in the description. Rufus is used to write the disk. So if I go here, open up Rufus, accept. Here's the drive that I'm going to be using. It will be wiped. Hit disk or ISO, select Ubuntu wherever you downloaded it, and then you can just hit start. Write ISO mode, okay, okay. So Etcher is done writing. I'll be able to boot from this now, but we also need to make a partition on our drive inside of Windows. So if you open up Run Again, or you can also alternatively do this by searching for disk management. I'm just going to type in diskmgmt.smsc. Should open up something like this. Your main volume here, labeled C, or wherever else you want to install this, it just needs to be something that isn't your USB device, because Ubuntu won't be able to read data from it while we pass it through. So I'm going to go shrink volume on my main partition here. 25 gigabytes should be plenty enough, so go 25,000 here. Unallocated, leave it unallocated, don't touch this. And now we can go and boot from USB. Turn on your computer. Hit your key to go in your BIOS. Mine's delete. You probably know this, right? You, you see this every time your computer turns on. You just don't read it. It said it right there. You can check your motherboard to see. Uh, and all you have to do is boot from USB. So I have a couple ways to do that. I could either drag its priority up here. I'm just going to go to this little boot override thing that I have. You, you've all done this before. Just uh, boot from your USB. Remember, you shrinked that volume on Windows, so you've got an install target. Just double-click this. If you went with the install, it'll just pop up anyway. Continue, continue. Uh, normal installation, I go to minimal, and I uncheck this. It just makes the installation faster. Hit continue. Install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. That's what you want. Don't erase your disk. If this option isn't here, just go back to Windows. It's, it's not worth your time. Uh, just, just click Install Ubuntu alongside Windows. Location, username, whatever. You do need to set a password though. Mine's just gonna be one, two, three, four. I would suggest logging yourself in automatically. Now you're done, you can just walk away. Once later, here we are, installation finished, just go restart now. Now that the install is done, go back into your BIOS. Two things we want to change here, depending on how the installation worked, you might want to change your UEFI preferences to automatically boot to uh, Ubuntu instead of Windows. If you switch it to the, to this, it'll boot just like normally, like there's no second partition. This will let you boot either Linux or Windows. Also, while you're here, you can set your virtualization setting. Mine is in the OC menu for some reason in CPU features. Uh, enable Intel virtualization or AMD virtualization. You just have to have your virtualization setting enabled. Then I'm gonna hit F10. Save configuration and exit, hit enter. Yours might say that you changed some stuff. Now it's gonna boot into Grub, Ubuntu. Here we are in Ubuntu. Open up a browser, Firefox, and go to github.com slash down the crop mac os simple kvm. And in here I have a one line install script for all the dependencies. So if you open up a terminal, you can just search for it, click in the top left, and it's just like Windows, kind of. Well, it's not really like Windows at all. Hit return. Ask you for your password. 
this sets up all of the uh, requirements for getting everything going. So hit return again. It'll take a while to download. So sit back and do whatever you like. All right, so hopefully that finished installing for you. At the end, if it says that it was like cloning directories or something, it was cloning into your home folder this macOS simple KVM, which is a copy of this uh, GitHub repository. So now we're just gonna go line by line and make sure that everything's working properly. This command checks to make sure that you have virtualization enabled. If there's no output here, if it doesn't have a big text block, that means that you need to go into your BIOS and enable virtualization. Next, we get the IDs for what our USB devices are. So this is, I have two. This is my onboard chipset one, like all of the ports on the back of my motherboard and uh, my front panel stuff. So that's this controller. This one's for my graphics card. You'll probably only have one. Uh, one or two, but it's fairly easy to distinguish which which is which. So from here, uh, you're going to want to know that there are two numbers here, this and this. They're useful for two different things, so uh, just follow along and we'll see what they're useful for. So first, we need that second one, this 8086A360. Yours will be different. And hit return. This is just a graphical editor, so go to this line that says grub uh, command line Linux default, hit space, you want this uh, IOMMUPT. There's a slightly different one, you just need to go AMD IOMMU, and for Intel, so depending on what platform you are, just copy and paste the right one, and mine was 8086. Uh, A360. So I'm going to hit save. And then we need to update our grub with that new argument inside of it. So sudo update grub. It'll regenerate the file. Take a second. Now we need to reboot. So just reboot your system. All right. So after you've rebooted, make sure that you have VFIO enabled. Paste this command in. You should get an output like this. If you don't, then VFIO is not working properly. But everything that we did up to here was to get that going. So now we need the output of that uh, LS PCI uh, grep for USB command that we had before. I'll fix that so it's easier to copy. And we use this second address, but now we need this first one. So we're going to right click and copy this. Open up the macOS simple KVM folder, and we need to edit two files. One is the macOS sh, and one is the USB macOS sh. So go here, uncomment these two pound signs at the beginning, and change where it says host. Paste in whatever you have. Hit save, close this. Same thing here. Open this, go to here, paste it in, hit save. You need the four leading zeros here. Don't get rid of them. So four leading zeros and then your address. And then from here, we're basically done. You just need to have uh, this Mac OS 7-zip or uh, an alternative bootable uh, virtual disk of Mac OS. So you can download from either of these two links and extract it into the folder. And you should have Mac OS .qcow2 inside of here. Because I have only one USB controller, I won't be able to stop the recording uh, and that will corrupt it. So I'm just going to record this with my phone. So from uh, anywhere you want to CD to squiggly line, your home directory, Mac OS, simple KVM, and then we're going to run sudo dot slash USB Mac OS dot SH, which uh, for you will still be in here. Just run this, hit return, type in your password. Your devices are going to be passed through now, so that's why I can't stop the recording. I hit return with the right password. And now, give it a second.
if it's up, just hit return here. If your devices are working in uh, that little pre-boot environment there where you got to decide the drive that you wanted to boot from, then obviously they're working fine. I can't, I can't access these from the host system, so when you shut down uh, the virtual machine, you're going to have to hard reset your PC, just like hold the power button. Ta-da! So now you have passed through your physical USB devices to the virtual machine. I have Checkrain pre-installed, and you would just run this, or go to Safari. Uh, internet access is functional inside of the virtual machine. Uh, and download the latest version, plug in your phone, and then you can follow any other tutorial on how to get into DFU mode and run the, the exploit.